every walk of life, but also a call to action to reduce gender inequality. In the business world, there is still a lot of work to do. In chief executive roles, men outnumber women by 17 to 1, according to data by Morningstar. Just 15% of top US firms are run by women, although that is a major improvement on a few years ago and is far better than here in the UK, where over 90% of the top public companies are run by men. Well, Nicola Downing is one of the exceptions, CEO of office technology firm Rico Europe, which has annual revenues of more than 3 billion euros. Nicola, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning. So is today about celebrating progress in the workplace or highlighting how much work there is still to be done? Well, I, th I think a bit of both. Um, I think we have made massive progress. If I think back over my career of sort of 25 years, I started, I was the only woman in the management team. Now that's not the case. You know, there's a much better balance of gender representation, but we have still got a lot to do. I read a report actually yesterday from the UN that said gender equality will be achieved in 286 years. So kind of let's celebrate where we've come and where we are today, but there is still an awful lot to do, yes. 286 years. Okay, well, let's focus on the last 20 years since you were an in-house lawyer at Tesco Legal Services before, before your 19 years rising up through the ranks at RICO to the very top. How do you think things have changed in those 20 years? I think there's a lot more women in senior roles today that certainly people coming through the business can look up, see themselves perhaps in those positions. Whereas for me, it was quite rare. Um, I probably had to look externally to RICO at that time. We're now kind of about 30% women on our board, 40% across the senior management team. So there is, there is that, that representation. And I think for us and most businesses, there's a lot more focus being put on female development programs, programs particularly around boosting confidence, making women believe that they're good enough and that they can do this. And also more um, balance between family responsibilities and and progression at work. And it's not necessarily a choice anymore, which is great. Why isn't it a choice? Childcare is the elephant in the room, is it? Is it because of yeah. hybrid working and, and, and fathers becoming more involved or what? What is what is the thing that is changing and what needs to change more? Yeah, I, th I think there's certainly an acceptability that men should play a greater part in the bringing up of their children. You know, we have very senior men in roles who do work part time in order to support their family responsibilities, which certainly, you know, 20 years ago when I was trying to get my husband to do that with our baby, it was just a no go area and men's careers would be ruined. And why? So what, what, what are the conversations that you uh, were having with him? And, and people will be interested in this, particularly because of, of where you are now. Yeah, my, my, my grand plan was that we would both work four days a week and our son would be in nursery three days. And my husband said, as much as I'd love to do that and stay at home one day a week with him, it will ruin my career. And if I go in and ask for that, I won't look committed. I won't look enthusiastic. And I think those barriers have disappeared. The one that's a massive issue in the UK, and particularly contrast to our other businesses and, and countries in Europe, is the cost of childcare is so extortionate here. You know, and, and I was talking to some German colleagues, they spend about 5% of their household income on childcare, and here it can be up to 50%, which is so off-putting. So until we can solve that problem, it is a massive barrier to women remaining in the workplace once they have children. And briefly, Nicola, you said about your company, we, we counted on your our management website, 11 men and four women, a bit less than the 40 percent that you're talking about in senior management. But it's around 30 percent across Europe yeah, um, in senior management yeah. roles. So it's, it's parity with that. That's that's obviously less than 50 percent. What what specifically are you find, finding that's working in your company that's changing that? I think um, it helps having me in the, in, the, um, in the top job, for sure. Um, I think it gives people more hope that they can get there. Um, we are very flexible around our working hours. Um, one of my board members does work part-time, who's a woman, four days a week. Um, so we've got people coming through all the time. What it doesn't mean is that we don't promote good men. We absolutely do, and there does need to be that balance. And women only want to be promoted on capability and competence, not just to be the token woman in the room, that's for sure. But I think there's a lot more flexibility these days than there's ever been. But, you know, the stats show, and we're 30% at board level, 40% across the management team, there is still some way to go.
All right, Nicola, thank you so much for joining us so early in the morning. We're going to pick up on some of the themes I was discussing with Nicola there because a report